All right, let's talk about metamorphic environments. Where on earth do the processes we've talked about actually occur? And as you guessed, anywhere you get a lot of pressure, heat, or chemically active hot fluids, mostly at uh, convergent margins, hot spots, things like that. So we're gonna go through each of these types of mechanisms, but this slide does a pretty good job at giving you an overview of all of them. First up, we're gonna talk about contact metamorphism. Again, this occurs when there's just a, a really a large heat source like an igneous magma intrusion. And this is gonna start heating up the rocks around it, causing contact metamorphism around it. Um, and just like we've talked about certain grades of metamorphism before, the grade of metamorphism is gonna decrease as the rocks get farther and farther away from that heat source. So you're gonna have high grade metamorphism right on the edge of the magma chamber, and then intermediate grade and eventually low grade. And by looking at the grade of rocks, we can figure out, well, where was the original heat source, the original excuse me, the original magma chamber. Um, dynamic metamorphism, this can create some really beautiful patterns. This happens when you have high levels of differential stress. So you're probably gonna find that in like a fault zone or something like that. Anywhere where um, two rock bodies are moving in different directions, rubbing against each other, creating that shear stress. Um, it generally occurs in smaller regions, um, but it does create this, beautiful texture that we call myelinite. And that's when you get those little swirls, right? As you have that differential shear stress, the grains inside that shear zone start to rotate. And um, it kind of looks like a hurricane or a storm on Mars or something like that, very beautiful. All right, so I said dynamic metamorphism typically occurs over small scales. Regional metamorphism is what occurs over these huge scales. So this occurs when over a very large area, you've just got a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, a lot of hot chemically active fluids. And this occurs in some place like a subduction zone, right? Obviously you've got a lot of pressure there, magma creation, a lot of heat, but just a lot of metamorphism over a very large area. All right, next up, migmatites. These are fun. So we've talked about Right. Metamorphic rocks require heat and or pressure and chemically active fluids, but the material cannot melt, right? But obviously if you add enough heat, the rock's eventually gonna melt. So migmatite is what you get when the rocks just start flirting with melting. They don't melt all the way, but some of the grains do melt because we know minerals um, melt at different temperatures. So a migmatite is created when as temperature rises and prograde reactions are going through, there's a little bit of partial melting. The whole thing doesn't melt, but there's a little bit of partial melting. And you'll find these compositional layers where some of the layers are metamorphic, they never melted, but some of the layers did melt and they did migrate up through and cause deformation. So in this picture of the migmatite, the black layers are metamorphic, but that pink granite-like layer, um, it actually is granite, right? Because there was melting. So there's igneous layers inside this metamorphic rock, which we call a migmatite. 